As an artist, I get a lot of questions like, what's your favorite work of art? Or what piece of art has inspired you the most in your own artistic journey? And for a long time, I didn't really have an answer to these questions. Yeah, I enjoy paintings, literature, and movies from time to time, but I never really felt like I particularly resonated with any of those mediums. As I learned more about what the word art means to people, I realized that I did have an answer, just not a super conventional one. I was raised on video games, thanks to my sisters, but my parents were never too fond of them. My dad always said, son, if you play those games all day long, your brain will turn to mashed potatoes. And so, growing up, and even into my early adulthood, I thought video games were a bit taboo. Even though I was enjoying playing them, I never really felt like I should be. If they had nothing of substance to offer my brain, all I was really doing was passing the time, right? But when I moved out of that environment and started attending a school for art, I realized, wait a minute, video games are already a mishmash of art forms. They've got music, cinematics, art, written dialogue, and a lot of them have stellar stories. To pull off something like that takes a team of artists working together to make one big coherent piece of art. And if you've ever worked with another visionary, you'll know that's not an easy task. So, though some people may argue video games can't be as profound as other forms of art, or even can't be art at all, I now fully understand that there are plenty of examples that completely negate this viewpoint. There's one game in particular I think is a really good example of what video games can achieve artistically in their best state, and that's Fire Emblem Awakening. Fire Emblem Awakening is a Japanese role-playing game released in 2012 by Nintendo's Intelligence Systems. What's interesting about this game is that Nintendo told Intelligence Systems that if Awakening didn't perform well, they were going to box the series for good. So IS made sure that if they were going to go out, they'd give it their all. And that's exactly what they did. Awakening sold over 2 million copies, breaking the record for best-selling Fire Emblem game ever by a landslide. So how'd they pull a practically dead series out of the ground? Instead of just making a game, Intelligent Systems doubled down and made a work of art. Through the character design, world building, music, and writing of the game, IS demonstrated just how potent an artistic game can be. This is Krom, crowned prince of the Kingdom of Elise and protagonist of Fire Emblem Awakening. Within the game, Krom is a strong-willed, caring, compassionate young man who is willing to do anything for his people. Though he's a man of royalty, Krom also happens to be silly, quite clumsy, and lacks self-confidence in a way that's a little too familiar to players who might feel the same way. Even though most of us can't relate to being heir to a throne, it's still easy to relate to Krom because of the humanistic nature of his character. He's written as a lovable dummy, and has some lines that genuinely made me laugh out loud. All of the characters in Fire Emblem Awakening radiate this humanity through their conversations with others throughout the game. And it becomes easy for the player to connect with these characters when they're able to observe moments of vulnerability or mundanity that shares a parallel to something in their own life. People tend to be drawn in further when the game appeals to the emotions of its audience. On top of that, what makes some of the already dire scenes even more powerful is how composers weave the music into the emotion of it all. On their own, these scores are already fantastic, and the dialogue and characterization is superb, but what makes them so effective is how well they work together to make the player feel like they're right there in the world of the game experiencing everything alongside the main cast. About halfway through the game, Krom's sister, the Queen, is captured by the main villain, Gangrel. She's used as a hostage in an attempt to extort the sacred fire emblem from Krom, but before he gets a chance to act on this impossible scenario, she sacrifices herself to keep her nation's sacred relics safe while also preventing Krom from having her blood on his hands. In the following chapter, the track Don't Speak Her Name plays, which is an intense emotion-filled orchestral composition that reflects the mix of Krom's grief, anger, and conflicting sense of duty as he struggles both internally and on the battlefield with the loss of his sister.
When I say Fire Emblem Awakening is my favorite game, it's not because of the button pushing or the level grinding. I mean, yeah, part of its appeal is its gameplay, but I think what's really profound is how the gameplay ties in with the narrative. You watch the dialogue transpire between Krom and Gangrel as he holds Krom's sister captive, and the things Gangrel says make you want to jump in and do something about it. And then you get the chance to, as you experience the battle afterwards and influence the outcome. That's something almost no other medium of art gets to brag. You don't just sit there and watch the story unfold like a movie, and you don't just play the game as if the gameplay and narrative are disconnected from each other. The two aspects work in tandem to compel you to complete the game of your own volition. The beauty of Fire Emblem, and by proxy many other games, is that there are so many of these what we call ludonarrative elements that not only pull you in, but have you staying until the end, even if you didn't intend to when you started. I didn't think I would find a game of prolonged anime chess enjoyable, but when I got to experience everything that Awakening had to offer, I didn't want it to end. Each battle is a reflection of the bits of story that take place beforehand, and they're never forced into the context of the narrative. You get to watch your units grow through your own hard work and strategic prowess, as well as through dialogue and naturally scripted character development. See, the beauty in video games doesn't just come from the enjoyment of playing them, but also the messages and values they portray and how they go about executing them. Being someone who grew up with video games, a lot of my favorites left huge impressions on me. Even games I didn't particularly enjoy playing have opened my mind to new philosophical concepts, shifted my viewpoints on politics, changed my worldview, and overall have become a part of who I am today. For someone to say that isn't the power of art is blasphemous. Plain ignorance, if not denial, to accept coming change. Video games started off as a hobby, a simple pastime, but what they've evolved into is so much more. Games in modern days are now entire museums standing in their own right, walking their players through a myriad of ideas, art, music, and really well-crafted works of imagination that you can't find anywhere else. They reflect the minds of their developers, their artists, and aim not just to engage the player, but to completely envelop them in the compositions they present. While video games may seem like a waste of time to some, they've found countless ways to inspire me. They've taught me what it means to be brave, instilled courage in me. They've shown me how to help others when I have trouble even helping myself. How to pick myself back up when every bit of hope seems lost. I've even played games that have helped me contextualize and come to terms with my own anxiety. I cannot, in good faith, sit here and crumble to the argument that video games are just mindless entertainment when I have literally been moved to tears by so many of them. In their best state, video games are an ultimate form of art, and they've well earned the spotlight. I hope that, in the next decade or so, people will start to appreciate more the cultural influence video games have and will continue to have around the world. And who knows? Maybe someday they'll be displayed in museums along with other great works of art. Today though, all I ask is that people allow themselves to enjoy what they love, be that video games or any other form of art that resonates with them.